I've yes. listened to your podcast for a while and have learned quite a bit actually. And I'm happily married. I think is it, yep, it says there and um, caught this show in particular about partway through. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really too bad. You know, this, I only saw the one who had a really foul mouth and absolutely agree. That is a totally not example of a traditional, well, obviously not a wife, mm -hmm. what it sounds like either. And um, really gives a very poor representation, especially if someone really doesn't have an example of a great woman in their life and they think well just because someone says that they are that 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 they are and um so i think it's good that you're calling it out yeah it, it needs to be said because guys are falling for the fake traditional conservative trap right you know you put them in a you make them look pretty you know you put a cross on their neck and say they're conventionally christian you know they love god sort of thing they're cooking but then they run their mouth like that um, they just don't add up, you know, the behaviors and the words just are not the same. It, yeah, it really doesn't line up and, um, makes me cringe when I was hearing that language. I was like, I can't even, I mean, I've had a few bad days and, you know, it, my husband has heard a few blue streaks, not necessarily at him, but, but definitely when that's the, the, the front phase that you're putting on that, um, does not align. So, um, what do you think are some good women examples out there of, um, like you said, the traditional wife is not going to be on YouTube, is not going to be putting mm -hmm. out videos. They are happily cooking, taking care of their family. So mm -hmm. do we even have good examples out there that you can point to for men? I mean, good wives aren't on the internet in their bathing suit, wearing next to nothing, cooking food, trying to get the attention of uh, people. There was another one a few months back, I can't remember her name, but she was cooking a cake and she was criticized because she's got enormous breasts and she was wearing a very tightly fitted top uh, with the obvious intent of front and center, hey, you know, look at me. She's single, you know, she's looking for a husband sort of thing. Um, I mean, for women specifically, is that what you're asking? Well, since I assume most of your audience is guys, right? Yeah. So you're giving great examples out there of what not to look for. I think that, you know, that's super helpful. Um, or do you think it's really intuitive to guys when they see the right woman, they're like, oh, that's what Rich has been talking about. Uh, I think that you'll see them on the Ladies Night podcast because there's a straight, because there's an even contrast between women that are wives and wife material and the ones that aren't. Um, you know, we see this time and time again when Moff and I, you know, do the show there, there's women that are like, yes, you know, I am, I am there to support, you know, his mission. I'll get up early on, on a Saturday because he's got a golf game and it, you know, it's an important bunch of clients and I'll cook him breakfast and I'll clean up and I'll send him off and make sure he's looked after and the house is clean when he gets back because I don't want to go out in the workforce and, you know, you know, work and make a guy rich and line his pocket with cold. I'd rather serve my man at home sort of thing and have his have his children and do stuff like that. But these women aren't really on the internet. So I think the best thing that guys can do is they can vet. Do you have sons? I have a stepson, a grown stepson, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the best thing that guys can do is they can understand what good looks like from bad. And essentially, if you stay away from bad, then you've got a better pool of good to sort of sort through, right? Like I'm more of a you know, vet for what is a problem rather than look for what's great because great can come with problems too, because, um, BPD women, um, you know, they say that they're a lady on the street, but they can be a freak in the sheet and that's how they kind of like mess with guys. So I think that vetting for bad behavior, red flags will get rid of the trash, if you can put it that way. And the cream will rise to the top. Um, I think for women as a source of good information, probably someone like Suzanne Vanker, seems to be pretty level-headed. She's written a few books. She does a, a short form podcast. Um, she basically says very similar sort of stuff, but more from like a wife's, you know, sort of perspective, but she's got two adult grown children and her message is very consistent. It's not there for attention or validation or anything like that. Just a note on the BPD. I've heard you talk about it before, or at least mention it. And um, my mother was unofficially diagnosed. And I, if anyone thinks that that is like matches a matchbox that they want to play with, like avoid it like the plague. Stay mm -hmm. as far away as possible. Those people, and <laughs> if you're BPD and you're hearing this, I'm calling you out. But um, I've had the blessing of someone actually tell me to my face at their BPD. I'm like, thanks for the warning. Mm -hmm. um, God bless you. And I hope that, you know, God can heal you. But um, 
she absolutely destroyed the family. And if, if you want your life torn apart in bits and pieces in ways you cannot imagine, get mixed in life with a BPD person. Yeah. You want to ruin your life, marry a BPD woman for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, thank you. Have a good yeah. one.